you first start with Arduino, nine times out of the ten, you're usually starting with like an Arduino or a clone. This one's from Redboard, it's uh, SparkFun's version of it. And when you go to program it, you use your regular Arduino IDE, and you're plugging in either through a mini or a micro USB slot so you can program it, or a weird printer port that Arduino uses. I don't know why they chose to do that. Maybe it's stronger for them. I don't know. Never had a problem with this. But regardless, this is called serial programming. It's just regular two lines, one transmitting in, one transmitting out. You can upload your program, but that's about it. When you want to up your game a little bit, then you go to what's called ICSP, or in-circuit serial programming. Uh, you can do a little more things with it, such as re-upload a bootloader if it got corrupted for some reason. Or you can change the fuses. Say you want to go from an internal to an external oscillator or resonator, or you want to turn on or change the values of the brownout detection. You can't do that through the regular USB port. You have to use an ICSP port, which, believe it or not, is actually built on the original Arduino. Uh, let's see if I can get in here a little bit more and focus for. There we go. You'll find two of them on the original Arduino board. Probably never used them before, but it's a six pin header. Here's the one which runs for the regular AT Mega 328 that's on the Uno. And there's also a second ICSP port here for the little AT Mega chip that they're using from uh, Arduino as a serial um, adapter, something like that. On the red board, you only have one because SparkFun decided to actually use an FTDI USB to serial adapter chip. So you still have the six pin header over here to reprogram the onboard surface mount version, in this case, AT Mega 328. And even if you go up to the um, AT Mega 1284P or the Mighty Max, I think that's what it's called, it's an unofficial Arduino derivative. They even throw a 6 pin ICSP port in there for programming, and they still throw the regular 6 pin if you want to add a serial, uh, if you want to program just like USB through a serial connection. So you can do that. Now, when you want to up your game even more, so you want to move away from these boards and you want to go standalone and you design your own circuit board. Normally, you want to use as much of your space and keep your project as small as you can so your boards are cheaper. Well, when you do that, instead of using pinholes, you use surface mount pads. Like I have on the bottom of my Arduino monitor here, you'll see six pads down here for serial programming and the six pads sitting off the side here for an IC ICSP programming. And what this does is I can still program it, but I don't have holes going through the board. So this way I can use more of the front of the um, real estate. Because if I have six holes going through it, I can't run traces around there. I can't put components on top of it. So you want to maximize your amount of space. Now, programming it can be kind of a pain in the butt if you use, say, the USB ASP. The uh, cheapo eBay versions of it. it usually comes with a female six pin adapter you can put six pins in here and touch onto it but it's very hard to make a constant connection because you got to have it perfectly flat on those pads and you got to hold it for the duration of that programming period whether it be five or thirty seconds so what you end up doing is getting a pogo pin adapter now i'm going to move up to the board here i made my own version and i'll tell you right now it sucks i did it really quick it was cheap and dirty and then i went out and this is what i want to show you today I bought one off of a guy on um, Tindy, and I'll get more into that in a second. He did a phenomenal job on it, and then I'm going to show you how it actually works. Okay, so we got two versions here. On the left is my quick and dirty and piece of crap one, and the one on the right is the one from the guy on Tindy. Now first, go through mine. Here's my six-pin adapter that would connect up to the female adapter of the USB ASP adapter. From there... I got some pogo pins, ran them through a piece of perf board, and as you can tell, they're not even straight, they're not perfect, and they're bouncing all over the place. Not to mention my wires are crap. And every time you push on it, they flex somewhat. So there's only one piece holding it, and some cheap hot glue. So yeah, it works, but it's a piece of trash, so get rid of it. Enter this guy's little nice little invention, I love it. 
made by a guy on Tindy called Fem2Cow, F-E-M-T-O-C-O-W. And here's the page that you actually order it from. I'll also put a link of it down in the description. And yes, I pay for this. This is not an endorsement per se. I just really like the product. It kicks ass. So what he did is he's got six pogo pins perfectly aligned, whereas mine were pin style. His are more like a castle top, so they'll be perfect. They'll actually hold a lot better than the pins. The pins tend to slide around too much. You get the regular six pin adapter, and instead of just having the pogo pins go through one board, he has them going through two boards, and it's all stabilized. They don't flex at all. This thing is strong. It's not going anywhere. So, you basically just take your USB ASP, plug it in here, and align your ground whichever way you want to, and try not to drop and break things. You would take it, and let's sit right on this pin, push down a little bit, and you have a nice, good contact for when you're programming. So, let me reset the camera again, and we'll reprogram this real quick, and I'll show you how easy it is. Okay, so I have my sketch loaded up, up in Tools. You'll see I have the board set as Arduino Pro or Pro Mini, 18 mega, 328, 3.3, 8 MHz. That's what will work for my board. And also the programmer set as USB ASP, or USB ASP. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Take our little programmer, get it on the pins just right. Pressure on it. And normally you would hit the upload button. But that won't work in this instance when you're using ICSP programming. Instead, you go Sketch, and your third option, Upload Using Programmer. It's going to recompile, and now it's uploading. It is currently writing. I think it takes about 15 seconds on this program. 15.24 seconds. Now it reads it back, which it also does in serial too, just to make sure it flashed it correctly. Sort of a verify. There we go. 2, 23,144 bytes of flash verified. Now I can let go, and it's reprogrammed. I can even reset it real quick. There you go. You can see the screen at an angle right there. Here, reset again. And my sketch is loaded perfectly fine. Now if I wanted to, I can also use that to burn a bootloader, which is also tools, burn bootloader. You won't be able to do that through a regular USB port. You have to use an ICSP programmer. And if I wanted to go through the boards.txt file and change a few of the fuses, that's how you would do it. So there you have it. This is not an endorsement. He didn't pay me to do anything like that. I just wanted to show you this product because it makes my life so much easier. It only costs $10, I think it was like $4 shipping for it, and it'll last pretty much forever. Especially now that I've moved on from using our regular Arduino boards for the most part, and I'm actually building them on directly into my circuits. And I want to save that real estate on the other side of the board, so I do pads instead of pins. This works perfectly. So, the guy who has Fem2Cow and Tindy, thank you very much. I love it. It's great.